What's up world, Chef Jean-Paul here in the Louisiana Cook and Test Kitchen, your authority for all things great from the Bayou State. Today, I'm cooking one of my all-time favorite dishes. Has a lot to do with my dad cooking this when I was a little boy. I just love to recreate it time and time again for family, friends, and especially people who's never had it. It's robust, it's full of flavor, it uses fresh shrimp, one of my favorite ingredients. But hey, it's called barbecue shrimp. We have a few key ingredients here. We have some shallot, green onion, rosemary, lemon juice. We have some butter, green onions or scallions, shallot, garlic, and beer. All right, so all these things are gonna be used to concoct this robust, flavorful sauce that these head-on shrimp are gonna be cooked in. Now, if you don't have head-on shrimp, that's okay, but if you can get them, I really think it makes a difference because what happens is all that, that head meat and that kind of fat and row that happens within that, that head kind of leach out into the sauce, giving that sauce an extra complexity and depth that you only get from shrimp heads. All right, we got all our ingredients. We got a little enamel pot here. Now, there is a couple ways you can do this. You can do it in the oven in like a casserole style dish where it cooks in the oven. I like to do it in a pot because I have a lot of control over how that sauce and all those aromatics come together. First things first, let's dice some shallots. The shallot and garlic are gonna be, you know, our first two ingredients in the pot. Now this is a largely considered a New Orleans dish. Uh, as in the Cajun countries, yes, we make things like this, we make this dish, but its roots come from the Creole and New Orleans background. All right, next we have our green onions. Now I'm just gonna use the whites for now, because that's what I'm gonna cook in. I already have some cut. I'm just gonna use the whites for now, saving the greens for garnish. And I have my garlic right here, already minced. Now, that's gonna be the first thing in the pot. But one key thing about making this dish, once we get cooking, you really need to take it all the way to do it right. So what that means is you wanna have your mise en place ready to go. And that's just a French term, meaning everything in its place. So I'm gonna take that rosemary, which is a kind of a, kind of a key herb for this dish. You know, you can go without thyme, you can go without basil, you can go without parsley, but rosemary is a key flavor when it comes to making this barbecue style, New Orleans style barbecue shrimp. What I wanna do is just really fine chop this rosemary. I'm gonna move this aside. I'm gonna work this rosemary pretty good. I'll keep it in a nice little bundle here and just run my knife in a way that is nice and tight against my fingers. All this is gonna go in the pot together, so I'm okay if I just kind of move it over. We'll get a, some fresh basil here. Don't need a whole bunch of this. All right, I'm gonna take a nice little bunch of parsley here. That wasn't supposed to happen. And then what I got? Love is what I got. And that is oregano. This is another great herb to throw in there. Now look, oregano can tend to overpower a lot of dishes, so I'm, I'm gonna be pretty conservative with it, not like as much as I put the basil. We've got thyme here, I like that. We're gonna put a little thyme in as well. All right, so that's about good there. Just adding a little bit more. And then same idea here as the rosemary. We're gonna kinda Roll it up into this little ball, nice and gentle ball. Using my hand to press down against that cutting board and just give it a fine, fine slice through that little wad. You can see how I'm just keeping it in a ball. It just makes it easier to run your knife through. All right, we're pretty much ready to go there. Get all that cleaned up. Move them to the back. You can see this is this is kind of my shallot, green onion, rosemary herbs. That's gonna be going into the pot with two pounds of butter and some olive oil. So first, we get a just a nice generous amount of olive oil. And then these two pounds of butter first. We'll get that heated up. All right, so my butter is looking good. It's foamy, it's starting to sizzle. I know that's the point where I'm ready to throw my, all my aromatics in. I'm gonna get this shallot 
and garlic in here first. And then all the extra aromatics that I cut just now. Again, shallot, green onion, all the herbs, including the rosemary and all the soft herbs like basil, parsley, thyme. Let's get those in the pot. And from there, just give that a stir. And we want to just really get all those herbs, and onions and garlic, sizzling and sauteing in that butter. This is on high heat. We're ripping and gripping in here. Really want to see these, this stuff start to soften up and fry in that butter olive oil mixture. All right, you can see now we're really starting to fry all those. I mean, you can't smell it over camera, but I can smell it right here and it is doing all the right things in this pot right now. I'm gonna let it continue to fry. You wanna get that stuff nice and softened. And when you start to see that little golden hue, that golden brown in that butter and the fat and on those onions, that's where we're gonna move on to our next step. A couple of things that you wanna have ready to go is some beer. I have two here. Again, like wine, I've said this before, you don't wanna use beer that you wouldn't drink in your cooking. So make sure it's beer that you like. I like lagers because they're a little lighter, crisper, and they don't have a lot of that bitterness that comes from like IPAs and such like that. Heffenweizens would also work nice because it has all those citrus notes. The other thing we wanna make sure we have, some Worcestershire sauce. This is uh, another key ingredient for this dish typically. I'm gonna cut some lemons in half as well. This is, I'm gonna use the juice from these lemons. And if you don't have a lemon juicer like this, I really recommend you go on Amazon or your local store and find one. They're really great tools. Much better than a reamer in my opinion. They make them for lemons and limes and oranges. But just another great tool to get good juice, no seeds out of your lemons. And then lastly, I'm gonna take this lemon, I'm gonna cut the ends off, and then I'm gonna just do little thin rounds maybe like five or six of those. And this is gonna actually cook in the pot with the shrimp, just to give some of that rind and so on. You know, I'm gonna leave the seeds in because I'm cooking for friends. They won't mind, I don't mind. All right. It's still looking, I'm gonna give it a little more time though. This is one of those things, if you let it develop, if you let it do its thing, it's just gonna get, it's gonna start tasting a little bit better you know, and the more you let that develop, the better it's gonna be when you finish that sauce. I'm gonna let it go another couple minutes, but I'm ready to go with my beer, my Worcestershire sauce, my lemons, lemon juice. Take a little crystal here. I'm using crystal because this is kind of a New Orleans based dish. You should find this a lot, and crystal is a New Orleans brand, so I'm gonna give them some love there. Some Cajun seasoning. Pepper mill and salt. And that's kind of what I need, aside from the shrimp, obviously, to finish this dish. Typically, you will serve this dish with a big old loaf, a crusty, buttery, toasted French bread. So that's what I have this skillet here for. And once we get kind of the lid on the shrimp cooking, I'll go ahead and start toasting up that baguette. This is looking right. I can see the milk solids from the butter caramelizing and tanning around the edges. That's giving me a good indication that what's happening here is, you know, those different sugars throughout the onions and, and obviously the, like I said, the butter toasting that we're getting in a good place to go on to our next step. We want this heat nice and hot, ripping almost the entire time until we get the shrimp in. Again, we're creating a butter sauce that the shrimp can cook in. And so keeping it ripping and boiling actually helps emulsify the fat into these liquids. And you can see I have a fair amount of liquids that I'm gonna be adding into that. And that's what's gonna create this buttery, silky sauce. Yep, it still tastes good. That's good, it's a good beer to use, there we go. Okay, we're good to go. I'm gonna at least put one bottle of beer in here. We want to reduce this, all right? Again, we're making this sauce, so we're not going to go ahead and just throw the shrimp in just yet. I'm going to add that beer. I'm going to add another little splash, so a little bit more than a whole bottle. Good helping of 
Worcestershire sauce for now. I'm not done yet. I'm gonna have to taste this sauce before I put the shrimp in. So I'm, I'm not really measuring anything, but I know that's gonna, I'm just leveling those flavors up. I'm just building those flavors. Before I put my shrimp in, I'm gonna give that sauce a taste, make sure it's where I need it to be before I put the shrimp in. Because once you get that shrimp in, there's no going back and seasoning it after the fact. It needs to be built, ready to go in this pot for it to come out the way you want it to. And also hit it with a couple dashes of hot sauce right now. I'm gonna give it at least one lemon worth of juice. Don't be afraid to boil this liquid until it's like maybe halfway reduced. It's gonna take about 10 or 15 minutes of a good boil to get that sauce where we want. So the team here prepped some of these green onions for me and I didn't throw them in in the original saute, but that's okay. This actually is a really good mistake to make and just saving them in, saving them for this point, sprinkling them in, as that cooks down, it's just gonna give another element of that green onion or that scallion kind of cooking in that sauce. I still have my greens that I'm gonna slice up towards the end to use for a garnish. All right, you can see that sauce starting to come together. If you look kind of through and past, it's getting a little creamy down there. And that's that butter emulsifying with that beer and lemon juice and hot sauce. We're still not there yet. We got a little bit more time to let that sauce develop and start to emulsify those flavors together. So our sauce is looking mighty fine right now. It's almost ready. I know from just looking at it, but really what matters is the taste. Let's give it a, let's give it a go. There's no seasoning or salt and pepper in there. I'm gonna give it a little bit of salt just so I can taste it better. I know it needs some more acid and some more punch. So I'm gonna give it another hit of hot sauce. One more lemon. Then also another hit of Worcestershire here. Again, just trying to bolden and brighten those flavors. And there's so much fat in here and so much like butter, you need the hot sauce and lemon juice and Worcestershire to cut through that and start kind of balancing out all that richness in this sauce. It's only gonna become more rich once that shrimp cooks in there, starts releasing all its head juices into this sauce. Give it another taste. Almost there, almost there. I still, I still need a little bit more pop from the vinegar, a little bit more heat. I'm gonna give it some good cracks of black pepper. Another little pinch of seasoning, salt. I'm gonna taste it one more time. Again, once I get that shrimp in there, I will add some Cajun seasoning on top of the shrimp while they're cooking. But right now I need that good baseline sauce to be pretty on point. Good, it's got some punch. Got the lemon juice coming through. It's got the heat from the hot sauce, the complexity from Worcestershire. The beer is acting as a nice round medium to get all those flavors cooked together. Then you have that richness of the butter bringing it all together. We're ready to throw our shrimp in. These have simply been defrosted, but using fresh, frozen, all the same. We're just gonna layer those in. They're not gonna all be in contact with the sauce and that's okay because we do, we will have to like gently stir that shrimp in a little better. All right, shrimp goes in. I like to just throw my little lemon rounds right in there to cook with it. And then a nice, nice generous shake of some Cajun seasoning. All that shrimp juice will dilute this sauce a little bit, so I'm kind of balancing that back out with the Cajun seasoning. And right here, we're gonna give this, before it starts cooking too much, you can see how all those shrimp have already started to cook. I wanna give that just a toss, a gentle like fold in. And then from here, what we'll do is turn it down to low. So we can kind of slow cook, because really you want this to go about 15, 20 minutes to really get its juices going. Then we're gonna put a lid on this, just let it cook for a good 15, 20 minutes. 
flip it halfway through, fold it halfway through so you get a nice even cook on the shrimp. Of course, we're using, what are, what are these, Vanessa, 1620s, I would say, 1621 shrimp. So these are head-on 1621 shrimp. You can even use U10s or even U5s if you want to go kind of bonkers like that. Just know the bigger shrimp you get, the longer cook time. The smaller shrimp, the shorter cook time. At 1620, you're looking about 15 minutes on a medium heat. All right, it's been about six, seven minutes, our shrimp cooking. Let's give it a peek. Oh, you can tell. We've got a nice simmer happening inside of that pot. I'm just gonna take my spatula and just gently fold those shrimp over. Now, they look like they need another five minutes. You can see there's still some raw shrimp that has some loose curls there. We wanna make sure that's all cooked. See some of that? So just making sure you get that shrimp into that broth Having the lid on is going to help, you know, finish cooking that out. I'm thinking like five more minutes and then we're ready to go. On that last little leg of cooking here, let's get our French bread ready to go. Now I have some butter, have some French bread. All we want to do is get this some nice manageable portions. If you got four people, go ahead and cut it in four pieces. If you got six, whatever, you know, do your thing. I like to cut them right in half. I'm not going to toast all these up, but I really just want a nice golden brown, buttery toasted French bread, French bread or baguette to dip into all that juice. I mean, that's really the people who love barbecue shrimp love the part where they can just dip that toasted, dip that toasted bread into that sauce. We're ready to go on our little skillet here. You can go in the oven, you can go in the grill, go in a cast iron skillet like I am. We're just going to give it a nice little grease some butter this is unsalted butter and I like to season everything that I cook so if I'm using unsalted butter in an application like toast and bread what do I want to do then I want to season my butter so I'm going to season that pan like so just a little sprinkle and then get that bread starting to toast in that skillet I'll probably add a need probably need to add more butter here in a little bit because that bread will soak up that butter and that's a good thing this is a rich dish that you shouldn't feel guilty about using a lot of butter in it really works for this dish I'm gonna plate them in this big old bowl such a pretty such a pretty dish that you know hat plating in the bowl everybody can share it from the center of the table is really the communal factor also that makes this dish so special. The fact that we're all kind of sharing from a central plate and doing our thing. Can't forget about our green onions here and then just getting a good sharp angle on them. Just adds a little bit extra shape and contrast to the dish. Go straight on, you can do that too, no big deal. Just showing you what I like to do in this case. I can hear my toast, excuse me, my bread starting to toast. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, you know, if you have something like this thing, what I like to do is kind of move them around. Because there is a hot spot right in the center. Just keeping it nice and toasty. If you want to do this in the oven, take the kind of guesswork out of it. You know, get them a nice brush with butter, go in the oven, let them toast like that. But I do love having the contrast of, the, of a soft side and then a toasted side, which is why I like going on the skillet or the griddle. So I can really just get that one side toasted and leave the other side nice and soft and supple. Um, again, contrasting flavors, contrasting textures. All right, it's been about five minutes. Let's take a look at this. I am excited about this. Y'all ready for this? Because like my mouth is watering. When I smell this, I think about being... 12, 13, 14 years old on a Sunday when my dad used to make this and we had fresh shrimp in the summer. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this off because I can tell once you start getting those nice tight curls here, you really wanna say, okay, let me shut this off and just let it finish cooking very gently in this broth. I'm trying to keep the heads attached to the body. So I'm being, especially now that they're cooked, I'm being very gentle with how I fold these over themselves. Just 
This is not an aggressive stir. This is a gentle, delicate, letting, their, letting those guys finish out. They're looking good. Until my bread's done, they're gonna sit there, sit there, the flame is off, the lid's on, I'm almost ready to plate. And then it's almost time to dig in, I cannot wait. Our baguette is toasted, it looks really good. Our shrimp, good golly mighty. I'm just gonna give that sauce. I mean, there's really nothing more I wanna do to that. And all we wanna do here, obviously you wanna get that juice. So I'm using a, it's a regular like kind of kitchen cooking spoon. Just getting all that shrimp onto that platter. You see that sauce has a little bit of brokenness on the top, but for the most part, that's an emulsified broth there. That's what we want. Emulsified, I mean like the butter has emulsified into that cooking liquid. I could just dump it all into this pot, but I like the pour over of the shrimp, of the broth on top of the shrimp, and you'll see why. I like that. I mean, that is just looking fantastic, guys. Oof. Now, if you want, you can serve this sauce on the side, but you do want to get all this sauce out. And what I just, what I will do here is just kind of give it a, a last little drizzle. I want everybody eating out the same dish. I love the communal side of that. You see, then I get all those vegetables on top of the shrimp instead of just sitting on the bottom. Last thing, we just take some big old handful of green onions and just give that a good sprinkle there. And instead of putting that bread on the side, what I like to do is just get it in there, kind of into the broth. And that tells everybody like, hey, I'm supposed to be eating this bread with this shrimp and not on the side. It's in bread service. This is essentially your utensil. You're, this isn't a knife and fork kind of dish. This is a hands and bread kind of dish. All right, look, that's it. If you need any more inspiration to go cook this at home, then I mean, I don't know what you're looking at. If you want the full recipe, you can always check it out down below. That's it for me. I am out.